Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking just like home. Welcome to the show. Today we are featuring Mabli Matathia and Penina Njoroge, a Kenyan-American business couple based here in Houston, Texas. We are particularly looking at their efforts to open the U.S. market for Kenyan products. First, through Mama Mata, their retail and online store, and now through Man PPO, the toolkit for equipping exporters with automated solutions. Also on this show, how the diaspora can tap into Kenya's digital economy. There will be zero corruption. And on our back home segment. Our mandate is to make sure that we grow your money. Great. Let's begin with Mabli Matathia and Penina Njoroge's experience in business here and their impact back home. So how long have you been here? Well, I've mm. been here for 20 years. 20 years? Yes. Well, well done. I've been here in the, in uh -huh. for a while, yeah. I love it. And of course, complete with African colors. Eh? Yes, yeah. and all our African countries are here. Uh -huh. Yeah, Karibu. Asante Karibu sana. Houston. Yeah, great. Shukuru. Karibu Mama Mata. Uh -huh. Karibu, welcome to Houston. Asante. Welcome Santa. to Mama Mata. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And by the Mata, what does Mata stand for? So Mata yeah. is actually our surname. Yes. So our surname is Matavia. Uh -huh. And so we had this person who used to call us, uh, to call my, my husband Baba Mata. Uh. And so that's how how Mata was born. Wow. So okay. Mata is actually our firstborn son. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mama Mata, in a car familiar. This looks yeah. familiar. Yeah, Managu. So this mm. is Managu. Mm. This is a product of Kenya, as you can see. Yeah, I know them. We've featured them before. Mess oh, Foods. Mess Foods, yes. From Eldoret. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We do have their product. We also have Sukuma Wiki. Mm -hmm. But these are Mama Mata products, mm -hmm. you can see. This is dried sukuma wiki? Yeah, this is dried sukuma wiki. Ah, mm -hmm. well done. And of course, this, all these vegetables are dried, including managu. Yes, um, yes. All, we, we also had saga, but saga is finished. Dried sweet, sweet potato, potato leaves. leaves. Yes. It's a delicacy here. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And this one is really uh, liked by uh, Tanzanian people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we do have senene here. Mm -hmm. Senene is a Ugandan word for grasshopper. These are grasshoppers. Yes, they're grasshoppers from Uganda. So that is frozen matoke. Frozen from matoke. Yes, this is from uh -huh. the product of Uganda. We do have frozen matoke. Wow. And here in the freezer. Okay, so in this freezer yeah. we have chapati. Chapati. We have chapati. In, mm, brown, white. Is it imported from Kenya as well or made no, here? No, this one is made here. Okay, and the yeah. unga? The unga, sometimes we use Kenyan products, sometimes uh, we use products from here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Kenyans love this. They come oh, for yes. this, eh? Oh, all the time. <laughs> of course, Our chapatis chapati. don't stay. Uh, mm. We have samosas. Samosas. Uh -huh. yeah, we do have uh, samosas. We do mm. have beef, veggie, mm. chicken. Okay. We mandazi. have mahamri. Mahamri, yeah. We have mandazi. Mm. Mm. Mandazi. Well done. You see, we have mokimo. Oh, mokimo. Yeah, nice. Mokimo. <laughs> uh, we have gideri. Ah, you have omena. Omena. Mm -hmm. We have omena. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it, you branded it, Mama yeah, Mata. It's Mama Mata. Mm. So we buy it from a supplier here. Mm. Yeah, we have Kimbo. This is all the way from Kenya. That's from Kenya. Mm. For Penina, this is like a hobby. She enjoys doing this business. She has grown her clientele mainly through referrals, step by step. And you may be asking, how did they end up here in the USA? That's fishery from Kenya. So we have this, we have the butterfly brand, we have Amana. Kukuja Maju Kwetu, we won a green card. And when we came here, first of all, to live Gongwa na culture shock, chakule enye tumezoea, akuna. 
So it was a kind, you know, kind of a challenge. Ata kupata unga ya ugali was a problem. Because of that, you know, I've, I've been a business person since I was in Kenya. So that's how I started selling stuff in my garage. So I found a person who had imported stuff from Kenya. And I started selling jahe, zesta jam, blue band, you know, little, little things in my garage. And as we were raising our, our kids. So after, you know, the kids had grown and they had, you know, become a little bit more independent, that's when we came out here and opened the Mama Mata store. Penina was born and brought up in Nakuru. And guess what? She was in hair and beauty business before relocating here. I had my own salon in Kenya. So when we transitioned here, I never looked for any employment. I started working from my apartment, doing people's hair. And then we moved to a house where I set up my store in my garage. And I did that for a while until we moved out here. So all this hair is product of Kenya. Now, when it comes to importing products from Kenya, it is not that easy. There are strict requirements by the Food and Drugs Administration, FDA. There are so many compliance issues. For us to be able to import products from Kenya, I mean, it has been quite a journey. We brought stuff. FDA says this stuff is not accepted here. They have, we have to toss it or send it back. We are like, how much is it going to cost us to send it back? So... We are forced to, to toss it. Tossing when you, means, tossing means destroying, destroying the, stuff. the stuff. When you destroy the stuff, you pay the people who destroy the stuff. So FDA is not doing it for you. And you've had such... Oh yeah, we've, we've had, too. oh yeah, we have had our goods destroyed. Some, we've had some goods taken back. I mean, we are like, we're not going to destroy the stuff. We'll just take it back to Kenya. Very tricky. And this is where Penina's husband... Mabli Matathia comes in. He established Mabli Mwepesi Agenda Nne, also known as Man PPO, in order to help producers deal with compliance challenges. Our company is focused on providing project management uh, tools and services to vendors and business people in Kenya to meet the various challenges that attend businesses. Towards that end, the immediate issue we are dealing with was the issue for Mama Mata that you had previously, where they were having problems uh, importing stuff into Kenya. It turned out the issues were about compliance, which just required training. So we set up this app so that we can provide the training from scratch, so that we can be able to go along the whole supply chain process and ensure that we are compliant, so that we can now focus on the issues of marketing, which is where market access in the U.S. is the problem. The idea is to run this project through geographical areas known as precincts. One of the ways we found to do that was to have precinct project offices. That is offices right at the village level, which is what we are calling a precinct. A precinct, in easy terms, is a geographical area that's around the size of a polling station. Your school, your local school in the village is probably a precinct because that's the place where most people from that area come to vote, to have their seminars, to do their weddings and everything. So we take that precinct and we connect that precinct with people in the diaspora who are from that precinct and they help develop that precinct as, a, as an economic unit. Man PPO is basically the acronym for Mwepesi Agenda Nne slash Precinct Project Office. The challenges at hand range from improper labeling of products to food facility registration. Then we have issues like not knowing that certain things have to go through certain processes, additional processes. So what we have done as a logistics practitioner of 15 years and up, we have gone through that whole supply chain process and we have gone to the books that talk about this process, especially the codes of federal regulations, which are government laws. We have removed or deducted all the information that's, that's, that, that we've been given from there. We have built it into the app so that once that person goes through the process or through our app, they will find that they're already in compliance. The food facility registration, if you're exporting food into the United States, you need to have a food facility registration with the FDA. And that means you just register it, you show who the, the owner of the company is, you promise to give them access to check if they need to check it, and once you're registered like that, you're now free to move in. Then, the other one is the unique facility identifier within that same system. 
Now, the unique facility identifier is a number that is given by Duns and Bradstreet here in the United States. So that's easy. For me, I can get a Duns number in this office because the strut, there's a road here, there's an address system here, and it works beautifully. But if you're in the village, way out there, the only way you can give your address is next to this church or next to this school. So what we have done, we have formulated an address system that's based on the geographical coordinates of an area, tied it to the people who are doing it, and that's going to be our own unique identifier. That will help anybody, including the person who has their own home-based business, to be able to register as a food facility registration and thereby have access to ship here directly. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, the first present has just been launched. That is SEK Bishop Karaoke Kiahuria Parish in Kiambu County. So what we did, we've been building capacity within that community. They have registered a company, they have received training from KEBS, KEFIS, AFA, Veterinary, all those government entities have, have provided training to them. We have provided them with a solar dryer, and then once the vegetables are grown, probably within a month, they will now go through the, 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 the drying process and the packing process, all under the supervision of, of, of the regulatory bodies. So that once that process has worked, it's going to be documented as a manual, and that's what we are now going to use to give out across the whole country. We have 47 counties to go to, each with a product, one product each. And then now we are going to have that system go through. And once we've gone through that system, I'm confident that we should not have any problem getting our staff in here. When uh, this project will kick off, I know there are so many who will benefit from it. And when they are empowered in that area, they will also empower the community, because even like the church is part of the community, so they will not struggle to come and uh, give the 10% in the church. They will come and tithe and the work of the Lord will continue. My role will be in charge of uh, operations. That's in the sense, uh, in the platform, bringing farmers together through the VBS or the village based advisors that will be able to collect data from the farmers and put it in a digital form where the farmers will be registered with the GIS and the, their locations, the area of production and the specific uh, value chains or crops that uh, they are able to grow. One of the expected benefits of this program is reduction in post-harvest losses. There is a research that we did in uh, 2020 and we discovered that the post-harvest losses at the county by then stood at 65%. These are not losses that occur on the farm. These are losses that occur along the route to the dining table. For example, on the Nairobi Nakuru Highway, there is a place called Uplands, where the people in Larry take their greens so that to be transported to the market. After that, after the collections and the buyers have bought, if you go back there, you can collect bags and bags of skumawiki and other vegetables. Our president is talking about how we should do agriculture, how food security. It will give us food security, it will bring employment in Mashinani, we'll be able to have employment for our young men and ladies who do not have jobs and remove them from the streets. So to us as a county, we are very, very excited about this move. We are ready and to bring in investors, we are ready for our investors, we have got policies in place. For this pilot project, we identified vegetables, fruits, dried vegetables, the dried fruits, camel milk, and then essential oils. People can sign up and go through the training because not everyone will be shipping to the United States. I just noticed that Kenya has just agreed with the European Union on an agreement for duty-free access of our goods. People can benefit from our app. Quite promising quite timely and as we wind up part one of the show here is our diaspora bite segment diaspora bite brought to you by top top send send money to kenya from the diaspora by simply downloading the top top send app today to get started what we want is to give people the capacity to ship here directly so that we can be able to help those farmers especially the people who are growing small things like essential oils like things like that these are things people can do in their homes and pack and ship directly to any part of the world diaspora bite brought to you by top top send 
Send money to Kenya from the diaspora by simply downloading the Top Top Send app today to get started. Download and use the code Chums Media and instantly get a cash bonus on your first transfer. With that soundbite, we take a short break. When we return, there will be zero corruption. How the diaspora can tap into Kenya's digital economy. Greetings and welcome to AMG Routers Limited. My name is Martin Gedenji. I'm in charge of sales at AMG Routers Limited. I'm in one of our primest locations, only 30 minutes from Nairobi CBD, only 10 minutes to Thika Town, which means it's one of the favorite and best places for residential development. And that's a reason we've been able to sell out Juja Phase 1 all the way to Juja Phase 4. Where I am at right now, it's 60% sold at Juja Prime Phase 5. So become part of Juja Prime Phase 5 and part of this growing neighborhood by calling us today and be a smart investor. Own your dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi and enjoy a flexible payment plan of 10% on signing of the letter of offer and the balance in equal monthly installments within 18 months. Supported by world-class amenities and infrastructure, our estates offer a unique, secure environment with a wide range of outdoor facilities. SMS Vipingo to 22365 or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. You're watching Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking, just like home. Welcome back. Now, recently in Brussels, I met a Kenyan delegation led by the Secretary to Cabinet, Masi Wanjau, and PS for ICT, Engineer John Tanui. And the mission of that trip was to seek international support for Kenya's digital economy. So I sat down with them and I sought to find out just how Kenya's diaspora can tap into that economy. Welcome back. Now, in part two of this show, let us turn our attention to the revamped e-citizen platform that has just been launched by President William Ruto and what it means for Kenyans at home and those in the diaspora. The revamped e-citizen will enable Kenyans access over 5,000 services through an app known as Gava Mkononi. Today, 5,084 services have been digitized, completed, and are now available, and another 3,500 are digitized halfway and uh, my instructions going forward from here to both um, the Directorate of Citizen Service and the ICT departments is to ensure that all government services must be digitized by December this year. You can see there are e-citizen services on our apps. On According our to President Ruto, Digitizing government services will increase accountability and ensure that every Kenyan can easily access government services. The services that have migrated to the new platform include business registration, civil registration, Directorate of Immigration Services, Kenya Revenue Authority, Higher Education Loans Board, the Hustler Fund, and Agricultural Services. There is also the Digital Police Station, and digital health services, among others. Kenyans are interacting directly with the digital platform without the need for brokers, intermediaries, and others. Additionally, people can track the progress of their interactions with government in real time. The government uh, pay bill is triple two, triple two. All the other pay bills in the next 30 days, they should be shut. You are going to be identified through your bio data. And in a one-on-one -on -one interview with Daring Abroad, the Cabinet Secretary for Information, Communications and the Digital Economy, Eliud Owalo, 
emphasized that digital government services will eliminate corruption. There is no interaction between you and the government office. It is between you and the technological platform and everything is real time. So there is no corruption. It, this is one of the means through which we are also going to strengthen our governance framework to facilitate efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery. Actually, it will be between you, the government, and your fault. That is why, again, we have embarked on a process of ensuring that a critical mass of Kenyans will have access to cheap but smart enabled phones. In fact, we are in partnership with the private sector already to roll out the first batch of locally assembled cheap smart enabled phones at a unit cost of about $40. The CS said each citizen will boost e-commerce and the data center at the concert technopolis will play a key role in the provision of these services. We already have a fully fledged data center at the Konza Technopolis and both government entities and the private sector are already onboarding their data there because it's a secure location. Yeah? Uh, we are encouraging the private sector to come in and invest within Konza and also store their data there. We still have an opportunity for another two additional data centers and again we are encouraging the private sector to invest in that space. The CS said the government was fully prepared to counter threats that come with cyber insecurity. So we are well prepared for this journey. We are equal to the task. We are pursuing this agenda deliberately and consciously as the single most important uh, game changer for our economy. And we are determined to transform Kenya into a digital economy and of course by extension the ICT hub for Africa. Everything, remittances, they will be part and parcel of all programs we are undertaking here. You would be in the US or the UK or, or um, even in Dubai or India, you are a Kenyan there, you want to come up with a startup business, you can access the Hustler Fund technologically. That was not possible before. So all government programs and activities will be available on digital platform and Kenyans in the diaspora will have access to those government programs and activities just like Kenyans who are within the borders here. Meanwhile, a Kenyan delegation led by the Secretary to the Cabinet, Masi Wanjau, recently visited the European Union headquarters in Brussels, Belgium, for talks on how the EU can support Kenya's digital economy. The Secretary to the Cabinet encouraged Kenyans in the diaspora to be keen on the ongoing digital transformation back home. We really are looking to the diaspora to enrich the local experience. I would also want to encourage members in diaspora to follow cabinet decisions because all key policies, all key uh, legislative uh, aspects go through cabinet that you would be aware of the decisions that are being made and that uh, members in diaspora can then use those platforms uh, to bring home their expertise even in stakeholder participation, because that is also increasingly being held online, that they would also contribute to that particular aspect, because together the team can make the dream come true. There will be huge opportunities for Kenyan entities to partner with the EU entities to grow the digital infrastructure in the country and also to grow the digital uh, trade. Uh, some of the opportunities uh, uh, opening up for Kenyans is that with the infrastructure connecting to our um, uh, remote location awards, uh, Kenyans can be able to access global jobs, the online jobs. Uh, there is huge demand for talent, uh, high skilled talent across the world and it is possible now to work from wherever you are. Diaspora is very key. If you look at uh, China, it is the diaspora that began to go back, that brought technology transfer to China to succeed. India, the same thing. We need to see our diaspora to work more closely uh, with people at home, uh, transfer technology to the people in Kenya, uh, and begin to grow the economy. We want to ensure we extend the current connectivity to every ward in the country and establish 1,450 digital hubs. That's one uh, digital hub in every world across the country. We want to ensure we can connect every market, achieving over 25,000 markets with public Wi-Fi, connecting to our public and private uh, academic institutions, uh, numbering over 40,000. 
quite insightful on how the diaspora can tap into Kenya's digital economy. We now move into our back home segment with Michael Zimanji. Back home, powered by Cooperative Bank. So, tell us, what is Corp Trust Investment Services Limited? So, Corp Trust Investment Services is one of the local investment managers, and we have about 20 of them in the market. We have uh, people who have foreign affiliations and who are locally owned. We are happy to be the largest locally owned, 100% owned by the Cooperative Bank of Kenya. We have been in existence for about 25 years. We are currently managing over 214 billion Kenya shillings. So our mandate is to make sure that we grow your money. So we are able to sit down with you, have discussions about what your money can do for you, look at the instruments which are available in the market, and when you are able to identify based on your risk parameters, then we help you execute on that. We will mainly invest in capital markets instruments, treasury bonds, fixed deposits, equity markets, uh, stock markets, uh, local markets here, the bigger East African market. We also do about a lot of mutual funds, including foreign uh, funds. We have some uh, allowance by the law to invest almost 15% of that. Fascinating. So what products do you have? We have what we call corporate products and we have what we call retail products. The corporate products are run by institutions, people who have uh, working in companies they've set up either a trust or a pension scheme or an endowment fund like for the universities. We have quite a number of them which we sit here and make the money and you're able to handle them in the investment life of, of those particular funds. When it comes to retail, we have a retail space where we hand in hand with managing corporates, we also what we call the high net worth individuals. People who are able to run their own small portfolios and you're able to work with an investment manager. So in the retail space, we have the money market, which is a unit trust. We also have the personal wealth management account. This is now an individual who says, I want to do this in four years. How do I get there? Quite interesting. And when it comes to the diaspora, what services do you have specifically for them? So we have what you call the US dollar COP uh, unit trust. We also have the COP money market. The unit trust is, is more of a mutual fund where you come in and you sit in with a group of similar investors with a similar objective, which is to grow the money. Now, all our products are licensed by Capital Markets Authority. One of the key things I'll tell investors, you always have to look for the protection of the law. And we have uh, our licensed products, the COP Unit Trust, which is a money market account, the COP Bond Fund, for the ones who feel they can invest for a bit longer than six months, 12 months. The yield there is higher, but the lock-in period is a bit longer. If you want to withdraw, for example, you have to give out four days or five days notice. And then the lying instruments, you're buying government treasury bonds and a bit of corporate bonds. For the money market, it's very fluid. You withdraw notice 24 hours, you deposit money 24 hours, it starts earning interest a day after. So for the diaspora, we have the accumulation of money. We also have a fully fledged property investment uh, department with staff who are able to guide you on your property agendas, uh, especially people who, are, who want to buy into real estate. Quite insightful, but the question is, what is the importance of the Kenyan diaspora investing back home? When you're investing back home, you're not only earning your own money, you're not only making money for yourself, you're also helping people at home live a bit better. So when you're investing as a diaspora, always remember, as much as you're making a coin for yourself, you're helping the general public at home to have a better standard of living, a better way of functioning, and of course, improve their moods. And of course, things like healthcare, education, go hand in hand with that. Let's talk impact. What have you been able to see through rendering of your services? One of the things I've seen the transformation of that uh, diaspora money is the fact that it's given the country such a diverse way of handling uh, the demand on, on hard currency. That's number one. Then number two, they have constantly sent money home for consumption and development. So despite you not being here, you become a force which even when you sit down in the Central Bank of Kenya, we are constantly discussing about those flows because you become an investment force, a consumption force you can't ignore. And finally, what advice would you give anyone in the diaspora wishing to invest back home? Cooperative is unique because of the mother company, which is a cooperative bank, which is third largest in terms of branch network. And number two, you're dealing with people who are locally owned, people who understand you. We have had players before who have come and set up shop and made their money and left. This is not happening for Coptus and Cobank. So we are happy to be here to be help, help you thrive. Our work is to make your life easy. So Coptrust has had such a tremendous growth mainly because of that diligent service. The team players and team members that we have, uh, the service levels that we have here are almost second to none. And the company has grown 
We've won so many awards in the last uh, three years, uh, excellence awards, which we are proud of because of the comfort and the commitment our clients give us. So come and join CoopTrust. Cooperative Bank, we are you. Very well. Remember, the back home segment normally highlights the happenings in Kenya and investment opportunities for the diaspora in their motherland. We now come to the end of the show. Always a pleasure having your company. Let's do it again next time. My name is Alex Chamada. Many thanks for watching. Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking just like home.